Thank you for tuning in to Gain and Glow, a feel-good lifestyle podcast with me, Vanessa, and me, Crystal. So today is Mental Health Day, I guess. Is it? Like yeah, a- globally. Global. Okay, I was going to ask, is it national or is it global? <laughs> global. Global. It's World Mental Health Day. So, Day. yeah. So today we're going to talk about social media. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially one of the greatest and worst <laughs> things <laughs> when it comes to mental health and overall right. sense of self. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So I'm just going to start us off with today's dope quote of the week. Don't mirror your journey to someone else's facade. And this is by our very own Vanessa Fox. Bum, bum, bum. (laughs) I love it. I love it. We were talking before this episode uh, started and Vanessa was just like spitting out, you know, great knowledge. And I was like, that's it. That's our dope quote. (laughs) I think that that is the key to our friendship is that I just spout out whatever comes to mind and you cherry pick the wise parts (laughs) and filter out the nonsense. (laughs) But it is, it's, it's really true though. I think one of the worst things, aspects to social media and, and to how available information is to us now in our digital age is comparing yourself or your journey to someone else's image and the facade that they present in the social realm in in you know the world wide webs <laughs> <laughs> the interwebs the interwebs <laughs> the youtubes but yeah. it it's one of those things i think that i've i've had to acknowledge the most with social media is, is not going in that spiral of like feeling down on myself because I'm not out at a pumpkin patch in the perfect scarf with the perfect boots and the lighting and the filters. And then it's like, well, obviously, because this picture is not a whole day. It's just a summation yeah. of 16 tries and filters. And But it's one of those things that I think that I'm not alone in, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean... Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is awkward. Of it's just you. <laughs> oh, this is awkward. You're the only one affected by this. <laughs> we should have talked about this before we started recording. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I must say, I am a pumpkin patch girl. I will <laughs> I will make my husband hold my stuff and my phone and get that ankle, get that lighting. <laughs> And it's funny because he's um, he's a like one one of his many skills is photography anyway. So he's normally like, okay, well if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it my way. And then I'm like, so then I have like a hundred photos to go through before. <laughs> <laughs> See, and then there's, yeah, then there's, like, the filter. You're like, oh, like, the picture looked great beforehand with the lighting and, <laughs> and all the orange pumpkin and your perfect black outfit, of course. But, like, but then you're like, well, maybe I could look a little brighter. Maybe you could make my eyes pop a little more and da 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 And then, like, something crazy is, like, I saw a video of uh, Kardashians, like, editing their face. And I'm like, you guys put so much money and effort and like your cosmetics and your skincare and whatever, like lip injections, like all this stuff. And then you still feel the need to Facetune, which just blows my mind. I'm like, I feel a little, a little, uh, like not showing my true self when I throw on like a heavy filter or something, but yeah, I'm like, Oh, I'm not even getting into the Facetune game. Like, <laughs> It's it's so. so crazy to me. It, it's funny. You say you're a pumpkin patch girl. I'm a pumpkin patch parent. So <laughs> <laughs> I've, I'm the one out there where I'm like, I've got my kid like sitting on the pumpkin. Now kneel next to the pumpkin. Now face the sun. Open your eyes. And then she's like, the sun's in my eyes. And I'm like, okay, well then face the pumpkin. And then I get home and I have 47 pictures that I'm like, okay, now it's fine tuned to the six that I love. And then, and it, and it is, it's such a dangerous spiral 
because on one hand, you're looking at all of the Instagram photos and the Facebook photos and everyone going viral for this or that, and you're like, wow, I feel the need to kind of meet that that standard. It's almost like the sta- the bar is just raised higher and higher and higher as far as how we present ourselves and like that keeping up with the Joneses vibe is so intense. And then on the other hand, you start to become part of the problem and you're... <laughs> It's, it's like that self-doubt and that insecurity just comes out when you're now posting this photo. And I know there's been times when I'm not necessarily in the best state of mind and having, you know, a bad day or whatever it may be. And I will sit and try to post a photo that I originally loved when I took it. It'll be like 20 minutes later and I've messed with the filters and I've like adjusted what I've said and then I delete it because I... I've now reached a point of anxiety that it's not adequate enough <laughs> and I just give up, which is terrible. That's so bad for your mental <laughs> health. Why would I put myself through 20 minutes of like insecurity <laughs> just for that perfect <laughs> shot? But then when I do put a picture on Instagram and I get all the likes and the interactions, that somehow makes me feel good. So it yeah, it almost a, just backs it up. Yeah, it's a dopamine effect. Mm-hmm. Like, you get, like, little tiny hits of dopamine when you get, like, something that makes you happy. And so it creates that cycle of, well, it'll make me happy if I post a picture and people like it. So let me keep checking to make sure people are still liking it so I can feel good about it. And it's like, did you enjoy the moment you had when you took the picture? Like, <laughs> is your value based on how many people like it? No, but you want the little tiny dopamine hit. It's like you're not, you're not even aware that you don't even care how many people are liking it. It's just that people are liking it, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is funny because it's like if you showed someone that photo, they'd be like, oh, that's cool. And but we just don't. I feel like we lean even more heavy, like heavier on it now because we're inside too mm-hmm. and you you start going down like this this com- this comparison route of well yeah like oh well Vanessa went to a bum catch that's nice because I couldn't do that because I had to blah 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 and I it's never going to be the perfect day for me and then you're like oh they got together that's cool I don't remember last time they talked to me and, and you're like whoa like these pictures and stuff are not about you they're not they're other people wanting you to see like what's going on with them and then giving them a little dopamine hit <laughs> you know get some, some likes like creating an image of of a of a happy life and it's like honestly I, we want to share our happiest times with other people that's that's kind of how what was nice about facebook when it first started it was like Oh, my, my family across the across the country can see that I'm, you know, going on hikes and they never they, they'll never visited Oregon and so they'll never like be here so they get to see it and see what it's like and and have a blurb about what I did and feel like they have a little bit of connection to me and and uh that's totally changed in my perspective. <laughs> I know it's interesting how social media has become such a double-edged sword when it comes to overall mental health. Because it, in one aspect, it bridges those connections. So when you have family members hundreds of miles away or your friends, you know, when you're friends in high school and you all go to college or whatever phase of life you're in, you have that social connection to them still. So you can fight off the isolation. But then on the other hand, it also creates so many empty connections, which in themselves make you feel less recharged by that by that friendship or by that relationship and and things become so empty and shallow that it's like is it really that much better than not having that that immediate connection it's like I always think about that how will our relationships evolve outside of where we're at right now now that we're all in quarantine and we've become almost 100% reliant on virtual interactions it's it's changing the way we we structure our relationships and sometimes i think it's making them less impactful as far as the benefits we get from from connecting with other people when you're when your whole day is spent just checking in on your friends instagram <laughs> it's like you're not actually connecting with them and and getting that positive 
recharge from the friendship for your mental health you're really just comparing their day against your day and Mm -hmm. it's kind of a vicious cycle so it's kind of like good and bad and it's a hard line to to really toggle and then that dopamine effect is it's addicting and then yeah then you just go on and you create a podcast and then you rely on social media (laughs) and likes and it's a whole other facet to this yeah which is which is funny because part of it like it's true it's like we we work ourselves up getting ready for this podcast and wondering if people even like it and almost talk ourselves out of doing every episode so yeah. <laughs> but like the whole point of it is to connect with other people like share our experiences which obviously we're not alone because we have it with each other yeah. and I've talked to other people who who have actually have said oh it looks like you're always you're always working out and I'm like well I mean, I I am, but I probably show it way more than what I'm not doing. Mm-hmm. So like, like I'm like I'm mostly sitting at a computer for eight hours a day. <laughs> yes, and it's so important to try to think that way sometimes. Like when I see like family members or, or friends doing fun things all the time, because that's what I'm seeing on their Instagram or their Facebook. It's like gosh, they're going to all these concerts or they're doing all this travel and all this stuff. But then when you really think about it, you're you're just seeing a, a, a hot second of their experiences. You're not seeing the eight hours they probably spent in front of a computer working or, or you know, at their job or the three hours they spent trying to get their kid to do their homework. All of that bad stuff or all of that negative or boring stuff, we don't document that. We don't put that out there, but it's there. <laughs> It's there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Like, real life is there. And I think it's there for everybody. And uh, it's interesting. I've seen a lot of people recently, um, uh, like, bigger kind of Instagram, like, who've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers. And they're talking about how how burnt out they are or how negative their community is. And I'm like, I never would have thought that. Like, I just see you do your photo shoots and like work on models and, and like think that you're doing okay. But they're like, no, I need to take a break from, from posting and interacting with people because it's just wearing, it's just wearing, wearing them down. And um, when you put yourself out there to the world too, you're, you're lifting yourself open for like, uh, like any kind of commentary <laughs> positive negative and as we know through through communicating through text message sometimes that message isn't always coming through the right way mm-hmm. whereas if you talk to somebody you have their tone of voice so you can see their facial expression and kind of get like a whole feeling there's so much that we we look at when we interact with people and it is really cut off by just doing it through social media and it's it's important to always know too and 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 remember that like those influencers and those celebrities that are putting themselves out there and they're getting all that love and that attention it might be enviable and it might be something where you're like man i wish that i had 100,000 followers or i wish that i bet you know i got that many likes on my photo or whatever but for every one piece of love there's also those brave people behind the computer screen that are literally out there just to throw around visceral hate and so every one piece of love, there is the offset of hate out there too. And when you put yourself out on social media, receiving negativity back can sometimes feel so jarring because you've come, you've become so accustomed to all that love. And the more and more <laughs> and more you put yourself out there, the more and more you're opening to negativity coming back. I know I've posted things, mostly on Instagram, I've posted things where in my mind, I'm like, this is an unarguable fact. Like, this is something that I believe in wholeheartedly and people are going to stand behind me on this. And I've in turn gotten negativity back about it where I'm like almost shocked that somebody would (laughs) counter my thought process. But then I have to realize that, first of all, that person's extremely brave because they're behind a computer screen. So their their comments or their interactions should, uh, should affect me less because it's easy for them to say these things when they're not looking me dead in the face. And like you said, when you're communicating with people, there's so many different nuances to communication. There's so many cues, physical cues and, and emotional cues that we share visually or 
with the tone of our voice or the level of our voice that you don't get through social media. So, but it's, it's hard to absorb it and feel okay. Or it's hard to absorb other people's interactions with each other and still continue to go on without being consumed with it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people like preface their posts, like say they're in a bikini or something. They're like, yeah, please ignore the messy hair. or Please ignore the cellulite. I was, you know, blah, the lighting was bad. And you're like, why are you making excuses? Like, why are you pointing out your imperfections and telling people not to look at them or not to acknowledge them? It's like you're you're trying to set up this boundary that you will not be like you will not give in to people's negativity about the flaws that you see in yourself when a lot of the times like I don't even see those flaws I'm like look how happy she is on the beach like enjoying herself like I wish I could be there like it's that feeling you get of seeing someone's photo you're like like wow that's enviable I love that but then it makes me so sad to see someone just turn and just focus on the negativity and kind of put up a wall and stuff and I I've I've seen that a lot in um in in people's uh, progress photos which I'm like you made progress like celebrate your progress like you were never like no one is ever perfect and especially on a on a journey on everyone's individual journey like every there's no there's no perfection there like, <laughs> there's never perfection there but when you've accomplished something you celebrate those accomplishments like celebrate your little moments mm-hmm. Because and, that's what that's what you're sharing. It's like don't take away like the positive energy from it from and, yourself before people even say anything. Right. <laughs> don't give yourself an immediate like deficit before you're actually like <laughs> putting your stuff out there. And always remember it's the final product is what everybody is seeing yeah. out there. And your journey to that is part of the, the fun part it's not all about having that perfect picture or mm-hmm. or you know like there is no flawless that's not <laughs> real even the kardashians face tune like <laughs> <laughs> there's literally and no such got, like, thing like a whole makeup and hair crew and lighting and they have it all man they have it all they and they still all. feel they still feel insecurity mm-hmm. it's it's so yeah. i like I like to think of it. It's like it's. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are. We all have insecurity, and it can be exacerbated by social media. And it's really important to like remind yourself that this is just a moment out of their day, and um, it that you know you're perfect as you are. It's like we're all we're all just humans, <laughs> and you we're have all just trying to connect to people exactly. And you have to fight the urge too to join the wave of like negativity. I know that sometimes yeah. I get stuck in the loop of my my downfall on social media is reading comments. Like I will jump down that rabbit hole with bells on and I will read <laughs> thousands of comments. Most of the time I try to focus on the funny ones where it's like a meme that sets up for great jokes in the comments. But a lot of the time, <laughs> especially with the current political climate, I find myself reading a lot of people arguing in comments and debating each other in comments or what one would very gently call a debate. It's, <laughs> but I Personal find, opinion. yeah, yeah. Um, but I find myself in that dangerous spiral of becoming so consumed with the negativity that I start letting it shape my overall point of view in my life outside of it too. I'll find myself getting almost anxious because of the things that I'm seeing other people say and and I just get I get stuck in that loop and then I can't seem to shake it after that and I know what I'm doing every single time so I've had to really become conscious of that and come up with ways to like stop just stop <laughs> I'm like telling myself like you know this is gonna make you feel terrible stop going down this loop but I know that you and I had a conversation about this before we started recording. Being addicted to clicking that icon and opening up that app, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, is a real thing. It is yeah. so easy to do that. Yeah, I, I 
uh, <laughs> I plugged my phone in like away from my desk so I couldn't I could just grab my phone and pick it up and I kept wanting to like I kept ha- and then that made me acknowledge how much I actually just reach for something that's not even right there right now <laughs> and and it's like it's so silly like you re- like it really becomes a habit like you 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 check your social media and it becomes a habit. It's Mm -hmm. like, we always talk about habit forming, right? And it's like, it's those little choices just to pick it up and touch that icon, just touch it. And then you're in it. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm in it now. I'm going to start scrolling and reading. And it does, it makes you anxious, especially if you know you're supposed to be doing something else like working (laughs) (laughs) Or or you started a movie, but like you haven't even given the movie any attention because you've been scrolling and yeah, like uh, with that icon is just like right in front. It's real easy just to click it. And so um, let's talk about how we've avoided that. Like how how do we break this cycle? Right. Because <laughs> we, we – and I love that you mentioned we talk about habit forming often. I think that's a common conversation that you and I have because everything in life is about forming habits in order to create consistency, which creates longevity of good health. However, you can also form habits that create bad, <laughs> bad mental spirals, bad mental spirals. Um, so the, the, the aimless scrolling while I'm watching TV and stuff is something that I do as well. And I know that you and I both, it's immediate to just click that icon. So one of the things that I did is I actually, okay, I tried deleting Facebook first. I failed at deleting Facebook first. <laughs> I realized that I didn't want it deleted. I found myself just logging in on the on the web browser instead of having the app. Like, I was still looking at it. So what I did then is I started replacing it with Pinterest. Because Pinterest makes me feel super inspired. And I get really, like, jazzed up about, like, making projects and crafts. It's, like, my gem. So <laughs> when I open up Pinterest, I'm more likely to, like, feel good and, like, positive positive. And hopeful about something or like pin my project or whatever. It's been a lot healthier for my mental state than going down those comment spirals. Like for sure. I've done the exact same thing. I <laughs> Facebook was becoming too much for me because it was literally just everyone's opinions about everything going on in the world. And I'm like, I am already looking at the news and I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is too much. Like I, you know, I form my own opinion. I'm always open to new information, but like I, Facebook is not being the source for that information. So I did manage to delete, delete it off my phone. It's still there if I want to like go back to it, which I don't know, maybe I will, maybe I won't successfully done it for over a month Woo! <laughs> facebook instagram, clean one month <laughs> yeah facebook clean <laughs> instagram however is still there but i did move, i did move it to the end of my folder which i have a social media folder which i put like kind of on the back part of my phone so that i have to scroll through all my other apps before like i, I get there and i put pinterest in the front and i put pinterest and reddit because reddit i normally use for a source of inspiration for like uh for meal prepping and for uh, seeing other people's progress uh, and and other people's projects too. Like people like woodworking, some guy carved uh, like a necklace out of like a, like a quarter and like made some crazy design out of a quarter. And I'm like, how? uh." Sophia (laughs) Reddit just blows my mind with what people can do. (laughs) It's basically (laughs) <laughs> what I like that for but Pinterest is definitely a source of inspiration for for like new recipes of course now it's fall and so I'm just getting slammed with all the pumpkin recipes which I'm like I'm here for it and <laughs> oh yeah and... pumpkin spice is my jam <laughs> <laughs> I own it I own it I don't even care <laughs> <laughs> and uh like drawing or painting or like tattoo ideas like you know home DIY projects like all of that on Pinterest and it makes me happy like it makes me happy to see like oh like look look what you can create look what some people have already done or look at something that you could just like click it and buy it like it's it's kind of like weird how it's like a shopping thing now too but a lot of stuff that I see that I can buy like a painting or or like a crochet or something I'm like I can make that so it inspires me (laughs) like save it to those folders and go back there for like inspiration for how to decorate my house or 
or like the best way to clean, you know, a yoga mat, like stuff like that. Yeah. I, I love Pinterest too for workouts and stretching and guides. Yeah. There's so many things that I have no idea how to do. Like properly foam rolling has been like my arch nemesis since I started working out like legitimately <laughs> on a regular basis. And Pinterest is always my go-to where I'm like, well, maybe I catch this video or look at this guide and figure out how to do this. And it has become such a good source of that kind of stuff specifically for me. Yeah, definitely. I've also, with Instagram, I love that we both struggled with getting rid of Instagram. I'm glad that I'm not alone because that was (laughs) one. Well, it was, I will say, so the the only real social media that our podcast is on is Instagram. We have a Twitter account, but we don't really use it very much. But Instagram is like our main social media platform other than our other than the platforms we stream from, which is every platform, Apple, Google, Spreaker, Spotify. You should go follow us and listen to us. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Instagram was one of the ones that I couldn't really get rid of because I didn't want to lose the connection to the podcast account, which gave me an excuse to continually check my account, which was yeah. not, it wasn't that much more positive than Facebook. So I also started thinning out my, my follows, like the pages that I was following, I was like evaluating, is this page positive or is it negative? Like how much of it comes through that makes me feel like genuine happiness or enjoyment or entertainment and how much of it makes me feel frustrated or roll my eyes or like you know over it because we hear so much about the current state of the world some of the pages I it was almost like just regurgitated things that everybody else was sharing and so I went through and Mm -hmm. I thinned out a lot of the pages that I followed and subscribed to I removed a lot of people that I didn't really know very well a lot of people that shot negativity my way about certain things. I was like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, how much benefit and how much detriment do they have? And how does that balance out in my life? And how important is it to me to have them or to not have them? And I thinned out so many. And it changed my timeline a little bit. I started seeing more of the positivity, more of the you know, progress photos and women empowering women. And I started following more brands that were, that were things that I believed in and, and truly supported. And so then I started seeing more stuff that was, it was more beneficial. It was, it was happier stuff. And that helped out a ton, a ton. And I stopped looking at the comments. (laughs) So much. (laughs) So much. Yeah. (laughs) It is, it is nice when, um, I definitely deleted some some people too, um, even just a couple accounts that at first I thought were inspirational, but then just had me in this comparison where I'm just like, she's always so beautiful and she's always doing this perfect thing that I want to do. She's always taking photos outside with her dog, like just all this stuff. You're just like, why am I even worrying about what this person's doing? Like, it's nice if you can support someone and be and just and like and scroll forward but it's like if you can't and it just it just reacts like there's no reason to go through like an emotional roller coaster when you're on Instagram like I I love seeing what people do and like do well and like it inspires me and I started following like a few more um uh like people who do like kind of um some of the other podcasts that like I listen to like started following them and then they post little clips of their podcast where it's just like a little inspirational minute or having like a, like a, like a daily quote, like I started following more accounts like that. So it's like that would sprinkle in with all the images that I'm seeing of people like doing whatever they want to do. And honestly, kind of funny, like a lot of people lately have just been posting stuff they did last year because they're not (laughs) out there doing anything. Yeah. (laughs) I, I, I'm glad that you bring that up because There are some accounts that I unfollowed too that it's not that they were necessarily negative. It was always like positive stuff like growth or whatever, but it was accounts where I was finding myself comparing to them far too often. There was, there was, there was like an image of how I wish that I was or what I wish I could do or what I wanted to accomplish. And it was, it was not necessarily a negative account, but it was negative for me. 
because of how it made me feel. And I unfollowed some. And that's and I think that's an important thing for people to know. It's like it's okay to unfollow somebody because you're feeling envious or jealous or whatever, even if they're not doing anything bad or negative. You have to evaluate is it is it negatively negatively affecting you and give it the boot. Yeah, because <laughs> normally, like, if you get, like, too ramped up in a feeling, you carry that, like, mm-hmm. as soon as you, like, even when you close your app and stuff, and you're like, why are you carrying this around? Like, you, like, <laughs> like enjoy your day. <laughs> yeah, just go live your moments, enjoy yeah. your day, don't compare to other people, and don't overthink what you post to social media. I, I posted a couple weeks ago, I was, like, feeling really down on myself or whatever and I was like you know what I'm gonna take a selfie with no makeup no filters and just post it and be like this is what I look like I own you owe no one anything when it comes to how you appear your appearance is your thing it no one is allowed to tell you what you should look like and my whole post was like that and I was like well well I obviously don't look perfect because there's no makeup or filter so let's see where this goes and there were so many people in the comments that posted selfies of themselves without makeup and encouraged each other. And it turned into a really positive thing. And I loved it. And it was super fun. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I don't, like, you gave your, like, you mentally gave yourself that, that, like, unapologetic, like, this is who I am and I'm putting this out there. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like when you receive response from it, it's more meaningful, too, because you're like, I am not. I'm not so obsessed with, like, this thing that I've created that I require likes for people to, like, make me feel good about it. It's kind of like I just put myself out. Like, the second you just make that quick thought and go, this is what I like, this is what I'm posting, and you get it out of your way, it's like it leaves your brain. It leaves your brain faster. Mm -hmm. It's like working through an emotion. It's like you don't need to ramp yourself up to post something. You don't need to talk yourself out of posting something. This one, this one lady who does a a podcast, she, she has had like a crazy, a crazy up and down life. And one thing that she said, she's like, you know, you want to get better at building your brand, then post who you are. Like, don't segment it into, you know, this is like a weight loss account. And this is, you know, my dog account and this is like, whatever, like you just be who you are and show that to everybody. And like, you know, you just be your genuine self. You're going to get a lot. Um, you're going to get a lot more. You're going to get, you're, you're putting out what you want to attract. Mm-hmm. And that's genuine, real interaction. And yeah. I, I guess we could totally end this episode too on basically saying like, normalize being who you are. In reality. And and give yourself permission to just be yourself. That's completely okay. And you owe no one anything more than that. Definitely. Not They're sad. lucky they get to see. They definitely are lucky to see any photo that, that you post anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Gain and Glow. Our feel good podcast. I'm Vanessa. I'm Crystal. Take a deep breath. You got this. Yeah. Until next time, guys. Thanks. Bye.